You're welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Uh, right now is uh, our first hot topic, and this is uh, reps or House of Representatives. Nigeria's House of Representatives is set to investigate use of foreign currency as legal tender in Nigeria. And in fact, particularly it's the dollar uh, that's being used as legal tender in Nigeria. So. Our guest this morning is Mr. Jofemi Dagunro, a public policy analyst. Good morning and welcome to our show this morning. Good morning. Thank you. Okay. So there's this trend uh, that has caught the attention of the House of Reps. People are using foreign uh, currency as legal tender in Nigeria, particularly the dollar. Would like your comment on the move of the uh, House of Reps and the entire trend of using dollar to transact in Nigeria. Uh, basically, I think uh, this is not new. Um, years back, it has been a trend, uh, especially in the uh, real estate, uh, whereby people are, you know, giving their apartments uh, out in, in dollar. Uh, as, as uh, currency uh, preferred, you know, but we have to understand it. Um, Naira is the legal tender in Nigeria, and it remains so unless it has been changed. So as long as um, Naira remains the legal tender, and the only issuer of uh, the issuer of Naira is still the Central Bank of Nigeria, uh, no other currency, be it dollar, pounds, euro. Uh, should be regarded as a legal tender but i think the trend is on now more because people are trying to you know find a safer place uh, for their currency and uh, uh, because of the turbulence in the foreign exchange uh, market so you, you can understand that but that is not uh, that's not legal so there's no place for that however um, in the hospitality industry you expect that uh, to still be part of uh, the system because if you are coming in and you go into an hotel, you will see that in most cases the hotels will display uh, the rates, uh, the central bank rates uh, accordingly. And then if a customer or a guest comes in uh, with dollar, euro, or whatever, and uh, it's going to be a change, uh, and given the Naira value, uh, according to central bank and uh, the the customers or the guests the pay in that in that case uh, it's something that is uh, acceptable but just ordinarily going around town and uh, saying no we accept a dollar here I, I don't think that should be encouraged mm, well what you're saying is they get to the like in the hospitality industry they get to the hotel and they change it to the naira value but from from the experience it's some of these people don't even need to change it. They just tell you what the dollar value is and then you are expected to pay. Very, very common in the hospitality, hospitality industry, as you have mentioned. And I wonder why that is. And these senators or this House of Reps members, these politicians that are trying to probe it now, have been transacting in those dollars for a very long time. And I'm wondering why it just came up nowadays, now, instead of having come up a long time before now. Why do you think it is now that they're just waking up to say they need to investigate and do something about it? Yeah, everything that comes up uh, to make our country a better place uh, should be encouraged. Uh, it doesn't matter if we have been doing something that is not really good in the past, but once we can wake up and decide to do something good, we should encourage it. Um, so it, it's not too late to do anything good. And you see that we are coming up, uh, the country is coming up with a lot of reforms. Uh, the central bank has been investigated, a lot of all these things will come up, and if the rep uh, should wake up to his responsibility um, and begin to do it, uh, I think that would be a good thing. You see what is going on in the passport uh, office now, that uh, the minister says, look, you can get your passports uh, within 14 days, and uh, it can even be delivered. And these are the things, these are the new things that we expect to happen. And if this government is promoting such things, I think we encourage it. So it's never too late to do something good. And if this is what the House of Red, uh, they will probe it, it's not just to investigate. The thing is this, uh, most Nigerians are used to hearing this, uh, we want to investigate 
investigate this, we want to probe this. And at the end of the day, nobody knows how it ends. And uh, that is what is really uh, discouraging. And at the same time, people are invited to come, they are interviewed, and then <laughs> the end, you don't even know what has happened. But you keep reading and hearing, we are inviting this person, we are inviting that person. And uh, after the interview, after the noise and uh, all this stuff, and uh, nothing comes out of it. And that is the discouraging, the, uh, uh, I can say the annoying part of the whole thing. But starting to investigate the use of foreign currency um, is a good thing. If it comes out well that we can uh, discourage that and make Naira, you know, let's say make Naira great again, uh, is part of the whole thing. But I think the government will be looking into every avenue to make Naira a stronger legal tender, and they'll be able to see how can we make our foreign uh, exchange market uh, stable. So these are all ways, all avenues that we have to uh, look into to have a stable market. By way of uh, emphasis, for purpose of emphasis rather, um, how, how much damage is this uh, doing to our economy? the damage that using foreign currency is doing to our economy. Just uh, highlight it for us to, to see. You see, the point is this. Um, if you go to uh, a lot of countries, or a couple of countries where tourism is really their main focus, uh, uh, take for instance Seychelles, Mauritius, uh, you know, Maldives, uh, uh, Dubai, and some other countries like that, in Africa and uh, other places, you will begin to see that it is not new to them. You know, they encourage it. You know, they encourage it. But the point is this, how do we monitor it? The only fear here is, and the thing that I think has not been properly you know, controlled, is if they pay the hoteliers, if they pay them in dollar or in any foreign currency, who controls that? Where do they take it to? Do they take it to the open market or the so-called black market to sell? Or it's being regulated and all that? So. It's a way of generating uh, foreign direct investment as well. But then if it is not properly monitored, if it's not properly controlled, then there's a problem. And that is one of the things we have to look into. But we can, uh, like I said, in that industry, you cannot uh, ban it and you cannot restrict it. You can even encourage it, but make sure that it is well monitored, it is well managed. It is something you should encourage in the tourism industry. Yeah, well, well, but now they're talking about schools, and true, truly, there are a lot of schools that charge you in dollars instead of Naira here in Nigeria, not even tertiary institutions, uh, secondary schools, uh, primary institutions, uh, especially the private ones, not especially on the private ones, because government school will not charge you in dollars. But these things are happening. Schools, airlines, hotels, and so many other places will charge you in dollars, and we're just wondering. Uh, how will that turn out to to help us, uh, you know, in our in our economy? That's where our government has to, you know, really uh, sit up to make sure it works. Even if uh, you want to uh, pay your bills uh, in uh, in places like, uh, you know, maybe you want to do Google search, or online payments, and uh, some of these. Uh, uh, foreign companies, they just say you have to pay in dollar. You can't do that elsewhere. You, you can't be in, in Europe and tell them to pay dollar. They pay the euro, you know. And if you're in UK, the UK will pay pounds, darling. And uh, why should you be in Nigeria and uh, you want to buy a service uh, online and uh, the service provider is compelling you to pay uh, in dollar? It should not be encouraged, yes. And uh, if private uh, institutions are and trying to save their money that way, then it shouldn't be encouraged at all. It shouldn't be encouraged. I, yes, it, it's something people want to really save their money in dollar, but then you are not helping the country. But for the airline, um, you see, because most of them, they have this backlog, and they have not been able to take their money out of the country, and that is not good for them. And that is why most of them might be saying, okay, you pay us in, uh, in dollar or you don't fly. But then if we say, look, if you charge our people in dollar, you don't come in, then it's going to cause a lot of uh, ripples here and there. And, you know, these things are diplomatic issues. So we have to find a way to have enough uh, dollar to pay uh, our bills and for these airlines uh, to be able to repatriate their money. We want investors to come into this country and they should be able to repatriate their money. But as of now, we are having this issue, um, you know, having enough to satisfy the customers, I mean, the people, the populace. But then uh, it's going to take some time. But let's see. I, I said 
this new um, central bank governor must be working out something. And uh, the idea that uh, he even postponed the NPC meeting, maybe just to see what and what structures we have to put in place. We don't have enough uh, for a reserve as we've, we've had. So we have to begin to generate it as well. We have to do something uh, creatively, genuinely to be able to raise our foreign uh, reserves so that we can have enough to pay our bills. So this is why we are going through this as a country, and this is where people will try to find a way to really uh, make their own gains as well. So uh, the bankers have to be involved as well. Uh, the banks have to be involved. And a lot of things, a lot of issues we have to be uh, put in place. It's not just to say, okay, you don't spend it, but let's put a proper, monetary, uh, proper monetary policy in place, a proper fiscal policy, policy in place, and uh, then let's do the right thing. It's going to be tough for a while, but I think we need to compel our people to make Naira a legal tender and to accept Naira in Nigeria. You can't do it elsewhere. No country will accept that, you know. So... Is the right thing to do at the moment. Yeah, well, I don't know how, how that will work because right now, um, according to the uh, World Bank, uh, Naira and the Angolan Kwanzaa are the worst performing currencies in Africa. The Naira, and, which means even Zimbabwean dollar is better than ours. They see the, the whatever other currency in Africa, they are all better than us, except the Kwanzaa of Angola. And it's insulting to compare Nigeria, Nigeria's currency to that of Angola. And you were talking something, you were saying something about, about monitoring it properly so that uh, we can get uh, the benefits of this happening. But how do you monitor it? Because now that, according to the, the, the World Bank, uh, the, the decision of the Central Bank of Nigeria to remove trading restrictions on the official market weakened the Naira. So now Naira is trading at 1,025 Naira. And if you get this dollar from whatever means that you are going to get, a lot of these people, if not all of them, will not take it to the bank directly. Because at the bank, there's still some form of official exchange rate which is lower than the black market. So a lot of these people will take it to the black market and make more money. So how do you think that this is going to work? How, how will this monitoring be done? What do you suggest be done uh, to be done to make sure that this um, monitoring that you advocated can be carried out uh, seamlessly? It's just unfortunate that uh, you mentioned the Angola Kwanzaa, you know, and Angola and Nigeria, you know, they are all uh, exporting countries, and uh, this shouldn't be happening if you look at it from that point. Um, I think uh, we've mismanaged, uh, you know, currency or our resources uh, in the past, and this government, I believe, is trying to put a lot of things in place so that we don't continue uh, to have this kind of deficit. And that's why I think the government is trying to have this uh, expansionary uh, policy as well. If all these policies are put in place and they work well, like, you know, uh, making sure that the, uh, the poverty level is reduced, making sure that, you know, uh, small and medium entrepreneurship is promoted and the businessmen and women can really have enough, uh, bring down the inflation uh, that is really rising. You know, all these things are just all over the world, you know, um, but it's just because uh, it's taking some time now and it's going to take us some time to get all these things right and yeah, that's but, what but the world you. bank the world bank said that uh, what is really hurting the naira that is at a, that has brought it to its knees like this is a policy of this present government you know uh, removing trading restrictions on the official market that's what led to this uh, the, the way the naira is suffering right now and it's being 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 compared to angola and kwanzaa it's I don't know. So if this government brought a policy that has made the Naira go down this bad, do you think it's time enough for them to soft pedal, back pedal, and re-strategize? Or they should just continue and you have uh, confidence that in the long run we are going to enjoy? You have a lot of economists coming up with ideas and the policies can always be reviewed. But you see, for me personally, I keep seeing IMF, World Bank, 
Yes, they have competent people uh, doing their researches, but at the same time, they, they say things that, um, you know, sometimes it's scary, but at the same time, it's for us to just take note of it and work. If we have our own um, policies that is hurting us, that we know that is hurting us, we should be able to review it. And if we can review it at the right time and make it work for us, before oh take off the subsidy take off deal take off that and the government comes in and say okay we're doing it maybe it should be done in a different form in a different way at a different time yes all these things can be debated all these things can be argued but then moving forward is what the government is trying to do i'm not a government spokesperson but i think from what i'm observing is the fact that you know uh you know at a point in time even our legal tender we don't even have the naira to spend if you remember that even our naira we don't even have it and we're supposed to even have naira so these are the things that is so scary and to ordinary people we cannot just sit down and uh, believe everything that because we are compared with uh, Angola or any other country. Yes, they have their problems, we have our problems, and we're going to solve it. You know, America has this problem as well. Every other country has their own problems they are facing as well, even monetarily, you know. And so they are reviewing their policies. And the, the most important thing we have to look into is not just, like I said, not just investigating or reviewing policies. It's making sure policies work accordingly. The humanitarian minister came up and said, look, we're going to do this. We're going to the market to take you know, data and all that. Let's get all these things ready before we announce policies, before we do it, so that when we are doing it, we do it right. Uh, NNPC will come and say, we should, uh, we should be exporting uh, oil in so, so, and so time. Let's get to that place because the moment we keep, you know, announcing all these things and people cannot see it, it makes them feel bad. It, it's, you know, it de deprives them of their, you know, normal plans that, look, this will work. You know, so if we continue to change policy now and then, it will not help as well. So I believe the economists and the, 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 the experts in that area are looking into it and they'll be working out to make it work. Nobody wants his country to be uh, to be messed around or to be talked uh, uh, down that way. But then we have no option right now. We know we don't need uh, anybody to tell us what we're going through. We are the people going through it. So we know, we see it, we feel it. So we're going to work on that, and we will make sure that it happens. It may not be so fast, but it's going Monitoring has always been the problem of most of our policies, even our roads that are bad, our infrastructures, who monitors them, who controls them. There are expiry dates on some of these things, who controls them. So if we don't get that right, I think we can do a lot of reviews and uh, uh, investigations as long as there's no proper monitoring, as long as there's money laundering going on here and there, as long as the bankers, uh, you know, some of them will not, uh, you know, control some of these things, uh, that, that will be this problem. It's an ongoing thing. It has been there for a long time. If you go to Ghana for a while, I mean, sometimes Ghana has always had a kind of policy. Their, their cities, uh, you know, is fixed. You know, go to Dubai, you see it's fixed. You know, their dirham is fixed. So if we can do certain things, you can go to 10,000 uh, places. It is the same price you will find. You know, in in, 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 in in all these places, because they know what it is and the people respect their law. It's not as if people will not break the law. Yes, but there are consequences for that. So if we have all these things fixed and we have all these things being monitored, you don't need to be afraid of that. Bring in your dollar into Nigeria. We get the dollar and we make use of the dollar. But for indirect investment as well. Okay. Um, this final question, you know, you will have to be very uh, brief about it, but um, it will sound like a digression, but it's related because our economy hangs on it. Um, some, so many people have said, the stakeholders have said that the government is still paying fuel subsidy. NNPCL has come out to say they are not paying fuel subsidy. Uh, there are so many things that are not, um, you know, not connecting. They are not, they are not showing that... Uh, uh, there is truth in both quarters. We don't know what the real picture is. But do you think, as some people have thought, that maybe the federal government made a mistake by talking about this fuel subsidy removal and actually removing it the way they removed it and they should, in all humility, return to it? 
just like Kenya did, I think Kenya also did, they removed fuel subsidy and discovered that it was, it was, it was a mistake because they had more problems than the solutions that they thought they would have. Do you also think the government maybe for a time should return to the subsidy officially and without us having to hear like rumors that the subsidy is still there and some evidence is coming from here and there? Do you think they should go back to fuel subsidy at least for a time? and have a timeline to phase it out uh, gradually. You said it. You see, uh, I, don't, I wouldn't want to comment on rumors and speculations because that would not be good uh, at this time. And for people like us, you know, we should be saying things like that. You see, the government has uh, a policy. And if the government comes out and says, this is what we're doing, uh, and NNPC is an organ of the government, uh, if the people in the industry are saying something different yes actually you want to tend to believe those people who are saying it because they are part of the industry and they know it they know exactly what's going on but we will not be saying things like them because we still want to uh, believe that the government is doing the right thing if the government feels they are not doing the right thing like you said uh, president Ruto uh, came up with an idea and he said look this is not hurting and we have to there are a lot of problems out there okay we can review and i think the president but i mean you know really somebody that um We'll be, we'll be seeing all this, we'll be hearing all this, and we'll be hearing these advices as well. And uh, that's why I'm saying, let's see what's going to happen in the next few weeks and see how this thing is going to be one to October is a crucial month that we have to look at it because we have uh, Christmas coming and uh, it's a long holiday. People who have to be doing their shopping, a lot of people who want to be traveling here and there and traveling out and coming in. So if, that's why I said, no, within the next uh, few weeks, we should be able to see. Uh, couple of news coming out and that's my own thinking that if this news should be able to you know uh, guide us and be able to tell us what and uh, what the government is planning and uh, what the government will be doing with the monetary and fiscal policy uh, these are really key tools for the government to use and uh, if the oil subsidy is still something that they are paying i think it is not right because it has uh, been in, it's not in the budget to pay. I mean, if, if we look at that, unless something is wrong somewhere, uh, that they, some people are saying, yes, they're paying subsidy, and how will they be paying the subsidy? Who are they paying the subsidy to? So when are they paying the subsidy? So this they have to come clear with that. And I think that's one of the things that the senators and the reps should have to look into and call the, the right people and uh, ask them to investigate it as well. That's why they are there. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Geoffrey Dagonro, for coming on the show this morning. Uh, they, they, and they have to look at it and come up with their own uh, uh, suggestions and their investigations. Okay. Thank you so much for your time this morning on the show, Mr. Dagonro. It's my pleasure. Okay. I appreciate it. Yeah. We've been talking with Mr. Joe Femi Dagoro, public policy analyst on the show. We're looking at, uh, at the use of foreign currency as legal tender in Nigeria, why we need to condemn it, and if it must be used, how we can uh, leverage that and, okay, for the good of our economy and our well-being as well. We'll take a short break and return with our second hot topic and try to see where we can get that.